يعطيكم العافية everyone uh, Today إن شاء الله uh, I will solve an example on shear design of beams So this example consists from um, a simply or a cantilever beam The beam has a span of 5 meters uh, A compressive strength of 28 megapascal for concrete and a tensile strength of 420 megapascal for shear reinforcement that will be used and we are going to design this beam to resist shear by U-shaped stirrups number 10 10 millimeters يعني, U-shaped stirrups the beam is subjected to a dead load total dead load of 18 kilonewtons per meter and live load of 32 kilonewtons per meter and has the following cross section 400 millimeters width the uh, parameter b 700 millimeter depth which is h 630 millimeters which is d and 70 millimeters which is the cover to the centroid of flexure reinforcement since this beam is cantilever, it will be reinforced or it was reinforced by flexure reinforcement at the top side of the beam since the tension will exist there. So, so the, the, the first step is to determine the shear value for design. We have this cantilever beam. This is the uniformly distributed load. We use the combination that combines dead and live from ACI code, which is 1.2 dead plus 1.6 live. So 1.2 times 18, which is the total dead load, plus 1.6 times 32, which is the total live load. So W ultimate in our case is 72.8. And by using statics method, the equations of equilibrium for this beam, uh, the reaction which represents the shear at the support is equal to the applied load it's the only applied load here. We do not have any loads or any moments. So the load here is equal to the intensity times the span. So 72.8 times 5, which is 364 kilonewtons. Summation F of Y equal to 0 for this beam. So the reaction will be equal to 364 kilonewton. However, as per code, in shear design, we consider the shear value at distance d from the face of the support d is the effective depth and we previously mentioned that d is equal to 0 0.63 يعني 630 millimeters so by drawing the shear diagram and this is v ultimate and this is distance d we use the similarity of these two triangles this is the first one and this is the second one and we can determine the value of V ultimate as follows 364 over 5 times 5 minus 0 0.63 which is D so the required value for the design in our case is equal to 318 kilonewtons not 364 it's 318.1 kilonewtons this is V ultimate Now the second step is to determine the uh, shear strength of the concrete. Now phi VC as per code is equal to lambda phi radical F prime C over 6 B web D. Lambda is equal 1 for normal weight concrete. Phi for shear is equal to 0 0.75. Radical F prime C is radical 28 since the compressive strength of concrete is equal to 28 MPa. B web, which is the width of the beam in our case for this rectangular section, it's 400. D is the effective depth, which is 630. And we divided this number by 1000. This is over 1000. That's why it's 10 to the power minus 3 to uh, transfer the uh, value from newtons to kilonewtons. So the answer will be 166.6 kilonewtons. This is the 5VC. Beyond this limit, the shear should be resisted by uh, shear reinforcement. However, we have another important point, which is 
half this value because uh, in region that has shear force less than this limit the code mentioned that we do not have to add any ratio of shear reinforcement we can leave it without any shear reinforcement the zones that has shear force between 83.3 and 166.6 here the code recommends the usage of minimum area of shear reinforcement however beyond this limit 166.6 we have to calculate it normally to determine the quantity of shear reinforcement required now as for stirrup requirements so we determine the position of the previously mentioned two points the first session this is the span of the beam this is the 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 level of the cantilever of the position of the cantilever side and this is the free side this is the shear for the shear force diagram here we have the distance d so starting from distance d we have 318.1 which is the maximum value to be designed for and here the line will continue in a horizontal manner since this value will be constant so we need to determine the position of this limit which is half concrete strength shear and the 5vc which is for concrete so first of all we take this triangle versus the larger triangle and we use the similarity of triangles to determine the station or the distance so he determined the distance from here to this point as 3.86 and also similarly for the second station which is 2.71 distance from here to here we have this extension line this distance from here to the beginning of the beam the distance will be 2.71 in order to define or to divide actually uh, the beam into two to three zones to distribute the shear reinforcement at different spacings based on the critical value at each zone so first of all let's calculate the required vs we all know that vs is equal v ultimate minus 5 vc is the, the difference between the ultimate shear and the concrete capacity and we divide it by 5 since this is nominal so here we have vs as 2 or 2 when the ultimate is equal to 318 this is the maximum value so we have to, ha to, to check that vs is less than the maximum allowable as per code which is 880 if vs exceeds this limit we have to enlarge the beam section okay so after we check this let's calculate the theoretical spacing since we are using number 10 stirrups the area for each stirrup we have two legs each leg has an area of 71 millimeters square so the total area of each stirrup is equal to double this number so also from the code the equation is equal to s or s equals to av which is 2 times 71 the yield strength of stirrups d the effective depth over vs the value calculated here please pay attention for the units you are using in your uh, calculations so by applying this equation we can see that s is equal to 186 millimeters now let's find the maximum spacing to be or to provide minimum area of shear reinforcement yani in the zones where we need a v minimum let's calculate the corresponding spacing which is the maximum allowable spacing in this case here we have two limits it's either a v f yield over 0 0.062 radical f prime c b web we already defined this before or a v f yield 0.35 b web the smaller value we can see here that the smaller value is 426 millimeters however also we have another limit as per code for vs less than 0.33 radical f prime c b web d we have also two other limits which are d over 2 or 600 d over 2 is 315 it's less than 600 and 315 is less than 426 so we are going to adopt 
315 as the maximum allowable spacing for stirrups in our example. Now, we started to divide uh, the beam into zones. So for each one meter, we took a station. So at one meter, we determined the value of P ultimate, also using similarity of triangles. And also we determined the corresponding spacing required. So at one meter, we are going to design this part for this value, 318.1. Then we took another station at another one meter, and this zone between one to two meters will be designed as per the maximum value, which is 291, and so on. So at the end, we will have the following table. From 0 to D, we have 0 0.63. This was the value of 318. Then after reaching 1 meters, we have this value, 291. After reaching 2 meters, we have 218. We determined Vs for each case. And from Vs, we determined the required theoretical spacing. It's similar to the one we applied at the beginning of the problem for uh, the distance from 0 to D, which was 186, and the maximum spacing is a constant requirement, so it was 315. If the theoretical spacing is less than the maximum spacing, we will take into consideration the theoretical value, and we round it up to closest or nearest 5 millimeters. So here 186, we can use, for example, 180, 175, it's okay. Here we can use 2 to 5, for example. Here, if this was the governing value, we could use 540. However, this is greater than the maximum spacing 315. So after two meters, we will distribute stirrups at spacing of 315. Between one to two, we will use the following spacing, let's say two to five. And from zero to one, we will use this limit, or let's say 180, 185, it doesn't matter. However, the first stirrup should be placed after a distance of s over 2 from the face of the support. So therefore, we use the following distribution. We added one stirrup at distance 90. So we say the first zone, the theoretical value was 186. We used 180. Half this value is the distance or the spacing of the first stirrup measured from the face of the support. Then we added six stirrups at 180. Here we reached the second zone. We change the spacing. Here the value was 2 to 6.1, I guess. So we used 2 to 5. We added 5 stirrups. And then beyond, or at the end of the second zone, after 2 meters, here we used maximum spacing. And if we calculated the total distance measured, it will be equal to the distance between the face of the support or the beginning of the support, not the face. Yes, it's the face of the support until the limit where we do not need any shear reinforcement, which is 5 VC over 2. Here, the distance is 3.87. If we go back to this slide, just a second here, we can see that the total distance from the face of the support till the zone or the limit where we do not need any more shear reinforcement, here it was 3.84. So beyond this limit, we don't need any shear reinforcement since it's the, the, the shear force is less than half the concrete capacity. So concrete itself can handle it without any special requirement as per code. That's it for our example. I hope that everything was clear. In case you have any question, please don't hesitate to contact me via my email at any time. So at the end, I wish you um, a good day, stay safe, study well, wassalamu alaikum.